Abandoned, contaminated, and forgotten, or so we thought. This is the place where the worst nuclear disaster in history started. Even decades after the Chernobyl meltdown shook the world, its mysteries refuse to shut down. The most radioactive place on Earth holds something terrifying. But before we get to that, let's see how it all started. In April 1986, reactor number four at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant exploded in a huge blast that lit up the night sky. What started as a routine safety test quickly went south, causing a massive steam explosion that blew the reactor core wide open. Firefighters rushed in, completely unaware of the fatal radiation they were walking into. Helicopters flew low over the flaming reactor, dropping sand, boron, and lead to try and put out the fire. Many crew members didn't make it back, and a helicopter failed midair due to the intense radiation. In the days that followed, entire towns were caught in the fallout. Buses rolled in overnight, and more than 100,000 people were evacuated with barely enough time to gather belongings. Homes, schools, and memories were left behind in an instant. That's how the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone was born, a 30-kilometer barrier sealing off entire towns that are stuck in time. Pripyat, with its rusty Ferris wheel, empty schools, and forests where the trees have turned weird colors from radiation. But surprisingly, the zone isn't entirely gone. Deep within the shattered husk of Reactor 4, scientists found something that could be a ray of hope. Black streaks crawling across the reactor walls. Months of study revealed they weren't just surviving the radiation, they were feeding on it. This is the place where the worst nuclear disaster in history started. My adrenaline's pumping right now. My Geiger counter is beeping. But at the same time, it's very chilling to think about the people who died as a result of the actions that were taken in here that night. These melanin-rich fungi, such as Cladosporium spherospermum, were thriving where nothing else should. They grow toward radioactive hotspots, a behavior called radiotropism, almost as if drawn to an unseen signal. Their melanin acts like a biological converter, turning fatal gamma rays into usable chemical energy, a process eerily similar to photosynthesis. The implications are staggering. Now scientists think these fungi could one day be harnessed to clean contaminated zones, to shield astronauts from cosmic rays, or even to line the walls of off-world habitats. NASA has already tested them aboard the ISS, quietly exploring their potential. Before the exclusion zone was set up, there was another serious threat hanging around Reactor 4, one that could have led to an even bigger explosion. Under all that wreckage, a huge pool of water had formed beneath the molten reactor core. If the superheated corium made contact with that water, it would have caused a massive steam explosion that could have devastated Chernobyl and left a huge part of Europe unlivable. During those chaotic days, three guys stepped up. Engineer Alexei Anenenko, shift supervisor Valery Bespalov, and diver Boris Baranov. Dressed in rubber suits that didn't really protect them much, they plunged into the radioactive darkness with just flashlights and their knowledge of the plant's complex valve system. The water was so toxic that every movement meant risking their lives, and every second was one step closer to danger. They made it in time and stopped a disaster no one else was brave enough to tackle. Hit that like button if you're still here, because the next discovery is about to raise the stakes even higher. Months after the fires were put out and the zone was sealed off, teams went deeper into the wreckage of the reactor, hoping to figure out what was really lurking down there. What they found looked more like something from another planet than just debris. In the dark rooms of Reactor 4, a black, lava-like substance had seeped through tunnels and hardened into weird shapes that reminded people 
of an elephant's foot. This corium stuff wasn't your average leftover. It was a molten mix of uranium, sand, and reactor materials that fused together in the chaos of the disaster. Just standing near it back in 1986 could expose you to lethal radiation within minutes. Reports detailed how its invisible radiation fried cameras, melted protective gear, and caused electrical equipment to go haywire out of nowhere. Even decades later, recent inspections showed some disturbing changes. Glassy layers forming and crystalline patterns spreading, almost as if the mass is sweating something new. Radiation scans are picking up strange pulses, suggesting that deep inside this hardened nightmare, something is still moving, something that's far from harmless. Deep down in the buried chambers of Reactor 4, something unsettling has happened. Scientists from St. Petersburg University recently took a look at bits of corium, the molten material that resulted from the meltdown, and found something both fascinating and dangerous. After being treated with hot water, the dark lava transformed into two types of yellow crystalline minerals called becquerelite and fercolite, which took months to develop into sharp yellow crystals on the surface. These crystals aren't just interesting to look at, they're actually really dangerous. Packed with uranium and other radioactive materials, they pose a serious threat and can cause damage to cells just by coming into contact. Even though the original corium is still super hazardous, these new crystalline formations highlight a worrying chemical change happening in the wreckage. Experts are concerned that if these crystals pop up in other areas of the zone or start spreading through groundwater, the fallout could reach far beyond the reactor. Figuring out their structure is crucial for figuring out how to keep Chernobyl and places like Fukushima safe in the future. If you think the danger is only locked away inside those reactor rooms, then you're sorely mistaken. In a forgotten yard outside Pripyat, you'll find an old construction claw. At first, it seems like just another piece of rusty junk left behind after everyone evacuated. But this claw is something else. It was actually used during the frantic cleanup after the explosion, scooping up and moving radioactive graphite straight from the ruined reactor core. Even after all these years, Geiger counters go wild near its giant jaws, picking up readings of hundreds of microsieverts per hour. For now, let's check out the crane claw here. This was used in the initial days after the accident in order to clean up all that debris and decontaminate the area of sorts. But as expected, this thing got quite contaminated, a little bit on the outside, but of course most of the contamination is on the inside. Explorers call it the most radioactive object you can freely touch, even though spending just a few minutes nearby can lead to some serious exposure. Then there's this old hospital. It's a whole different kind of creepy inside. Wow, you can see all the bed storage here. This open room over here with all the beds looks really cool. Beyond the peeling paint and rusty gurneys, there's a basement that's become almost legendary for explorers. But even deeper down, there's a lead-lined storage closet that not many have the guts to explore. Once you step inside, it's like time has stood still. Burned medical tools are scattered on shelves. Iodine-stained bandages are stiff with age. And there are boots that belong to the first responders who tried to put out the reactor fire. Those items were soaked in radiation the night they got there. And even after all these years, they still pack a dangerous punch. This is our first sighting of the fireman's shoes. And as you can tell, the guide counter has gone up to 28, 40, 43. If I go closer, 87, 91, almost at 100. And all this was firefighters' clothes and safety equipment. 
just standing in the doorway can make a Geiger counter go wild, picking up radiation levels that are way too high in just a few minutes. Right next to the Chernobyl plant is a place people now call the Red Forest. After the explosion, the trees there soaked up so much radiation that their green needles turned a strange, rusty red. Almost overnight, it looked like a whole forest had been burned. But it wasn't fire, it was invisible poison from the sky. Even today, decades later, the ground there still hides dangerous secrets. А вообще-то, конечно, мы много гектаров леса вырубили для того, чтобы сохранить выпавшие плутоневые следы и особенно захоронить тот лес, который стал опасен в пожарном отношении. Он прожил в зависимости от э, дозы полученной. Scientists have taken soil samples and found patches where radiation is still very high. Some plants that grow back look normal at first, but others sprout with odd colors or leaves that are way bigger than they should be. It's like a place where life keeps trying to grow, even though the land itself feels sick. Visitors are warned not to wander off the paths because even touching the wrong patch of dirt could be risky. Towns were deserted almost overnight, but the forests and fields didn't stay empty for long. Over the years since the disaster, nature has returned in surprising ways. Now, wolves wander the cracked highways while lynxes, wild boar, and even European bison roam through the overgrown streets of Pripyat, reclaiming the space humans left behind. Scientists set up hidden cameras and were amazed to find apex predators thriving in a place saturated with radiation. The wolf packs here have grown bigger than those outside the zone, and some animals are showing off unique traits, like birds with unusual feathers and insects with weird markings. Despite the odds, they manage to survive. It's like this forbidden land has turned into an accidental wildlife refuge, where animals live free from human interference. Even after decades, the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone refuses to stay silent. What began as one catastrophic night has turned into a place where new horrors quietly emerge. And yet Chernobyl's secrets are far from over. Let us know in the comments. What do you think about these discoveries? Are we ready for what else could be hidden out there? 